Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm just doing something really simple. I'm doing a paper chain. Um, it's been a while since I've been on here, so I just thought I'd sit down and do my craft project and sit and chat with you guys. So today, what I'm doing is I'm just getting um, paper that I got from Michaels. This is red glittery paper. You can get whatever color suits your fancy. This is the Recollections or Recollections um, glitter paper, which I haven't bought glitter paper in a long time, but this like doesn't shed like everywhere. Like last time I bought glitter paper, it was like a big old mess. So that's good. Um, but all I'm doing is I have my paper cutter here and I'm just cutting them into little one inch sections. The thing about this paper though, and maybe it's the blade on my paper cutter too, is that it is a little bit dull and so, or it just doesn't cut through the paper all the way. And so I just have been bending it like so, and then coming back through and cutting on the line. Um, anyways, so to catch you guys up a little bit on my life, the past year we were, um, my husband's job sent us down to Australia and we just very, like took very minimal things. We got rid of a lot of our furniture um, in our old house um, just because we were, they sent us there for like one or two years and they just weren't sure how long we were gonna be there for. Um, it ended up only being a year, thankfully. Um, and I know, I, I don't mean that like rudely or meanly, but there's just no place like home. Like that's the best way to describe it. Um, Australia was beautiful. It was, it's a great place to visit. Um, and for the first six months, it was wonderful. And then, um, it wasn't anymore. I don't know how to explain that. It's also hard to do things like that with small children. We have three kids. Um, number four is on the way. And it just was hard. It's not something that is easy to do with little kids. Um, we also like lived very minimalist over there, so I didn't take any of my nail polish stuff. I didn't take any, really anything. Um, like I said, we bought all new furniture over there, like just from Ikea, and it was super like minimal, bare bones, this is what we needed. Um, and then we also just got, we didn't have a car. Um, we just used public transport over there, which I mean, we were in the city. So really, even if we would have had a car, it's not like there's a place for us to park. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not, we didn't have, we lived no backyard, no, we basically took a big step back um, from what we were used to. So what we had before was our own house with a big yard for the kids, trampoline, um, you know, it, the luxuries of life, I guess. And so moving there, we did, we, did, we got rid of a whole bunch of stuff um, to put into perspective everything we got rid of. The only furniture that ended up staying is this entertainment center my dad built me, which is absolutely beautiful and my dad built it, so I will never ever get rid of it. Um, that's the only furniture we kept. We kept that. We kept an entry table that I really loved and um, my son's bedroom set, which was a bunk bed with a dresser and a nightstand and the bunk beds can go into single beds. That's the only furniture we kept. Oh, and a kid's play table. That's the only furniture we kept. So everything else we got rid of. Um, we lived in a three bed, two bath home with two living rooms, a dining room. You know, we had a, it was pretty, pretty big house. Um, not pretty big. It was like your traditional like Rambler ranch home. 
but we just got rid of everything because I just was sitting there thinking, I don't want this stuff sitting in storage. And if a mouse gets in there, and I had had my other family members tell me like, don't put a lot in storage because mice get in there all the time. It's not gonna sit well for two years. Um, just different things like that. So we did, we got rid of a lot, like even like other possessions in life. Like basically all we took to Australia was a suitcase full of toys for my kids because like I said, we have small children. <laughs> so we took a suitcase full of toys for my kids and then the rest was clothes. Um, we didn't take anything else with us. And then basically that's all that went in our storage unit was we got rid of a lot of my kids' toys. Um, I want to say there was probably one big box of toys that went into a storage unit. And then there was our big box of like DVDs that went into the storage unit, that, that went into the storage unit, and very few pots and pans. I didn't keep any like dishware or anything like that because not only that, like I just didn't love the dishes that I had. They were kind of just like hodgepodge, mishmashed, different pieces here and there. Um, so they weren't my favorite, so we ended up like donating a lot of our stuff that we got rid of, or we gave it to neighbors that were in need, things like that. So, um, so yeah, what I'm basically saying is we just didn't take a lot and didn't keep a lot either. So now it's Christmas time and we bought a new home because we're supposed to be here for the unforeseeable future. Like this is hopefully it. I hope I'm not jinxing myself saying that. And so now, having it be Christmas time and having to refurnish a whole house and um, we had to buy a car. Um, and I know lots of you are thinking you probably didn't have to buy a car, um, but we did. We live out uh, a good 10 minutes from the nearest grocery store. So we live out in the country, which is exactly what I wanted. After I grew up in the country and after living in the city and literally in Sydney, you are living on top of other people. We were really lucky and we were in kind of an outer suburb of the city, um, but still like living on top of people. We shared a house um, and by that I mean like it was originally one home and then the owners that decided to rent it boarded up the staircase and um, people lived upstairs and people lived downstairs. We lived upstairs and so we were literally living on top of people. Um, but anyways, so that's what we did all last year and you really don't understand or appreciate um, how blessed you are, where you come from, um, or how blessed you are to live in America, unless you live outside of America. Um, like I said, we have small kids, so there's lots of things I had to do, um, doctor's visits and ways for them to get them registered for school there. And um, <clears throat> common, so they are part of the Commonwealth. So Australia is tied to Britain and they're part of the Commonwealth. That means they have um, free health care. Uh, I, <clears throat> I know there are some people out there that want free health care and all that jazz. Um, go live in another country that has free health care, like live there and tell me Tell me if you still want to do that. Um, the doctor's offices are filthy. They're not sterile at all. Like they're beyond dirty and disgusting. Um, the actual office that you go in and sit at is like where the doctor has their office. So like there's filing cabinets, there's papers everywhere. Um, there's, it's just, and I mean, I know some of you are probably thinking, well, that's just one office. No, I went to several doctor's offices and they were all the same, like dirty, 
grimy, not clean. Um, like honestly walking in there, I thought I don't care what I have. I will catch something worse walking into this place. Um, the bed that like your, the examination bed were disgusting. Like the paper that, you know, they put down on the bed for like sanitary precautions. Um, looks like it had been there for a while. Um, <clears throat> on top of just the general overall cleanliness and aesthetics of it all, you also had the um, pleasure of waiting months or years at a time to see a doctor. Um, the only way that we were able to see doctors so quickly is because we would say, um, whenever I called, they'd ask for our insurance. And um, every time I'd be like, we're private, we're private insurance. And that meant that we would pay in full every time we went to the doctor's office. And then I would have to submit it to our insurance company and we'd be reimbursed. And so every time I said that, like, here's a specific story. For those of you who may or may not know, my youngest, my current youngest, my third, he has seizures, um, developmental seizures. He got diagnosed with them right before we moved to Australia. Um, and so they're hoping that in two years, being on medications, if he doesn't seize, he can be taken off. Um, anyways, but because of that, I had to go see a specialist, which is a pediatrician. That's the other thing. My other kids couldn't see a pediatrician because they didn't have anything severely wrong with them, which I'm grateful that they don't have anything severely long, wrong with them. But when I'm taking my children to see the doctor, I want them to see a child's doctor. Um, anyways, so my third was allowed to go see a pediatrician. And when I called to schedule an appointment at the pediatrician's office, the secretary told me, I said, you know, I gave him my name, my information, I told him the backstory, and their response was, um, oh, she doesn't have any opening for months. We're gonna, we're gonna be scheduling this out for about three months in advance. And I said, oh, okay, that's fine. I had kind of figured, I had prepared, I had brought four months of medication with me for my um, youngest, because that's what you're allowed to bring to Australia. And um, so I was prepared. I had called them right when we got there, so I wasn't too worried. I knew that we would have medication, we'd be fine. Um, <clears throat> and then in the same conversation, this receptionist is making this appointment for me and goes, well, who's your healthcare provider or who, who's your insurance? And I said, oh, we have private insurance. And they go, oh, you do? And I said, yes. And they go, um, actually, we just had a can cancellation and you can come in on Wednesday. There was no pause in the conversation, no phone rang. She didn't tell me to hold. She didn't tell me to, you know, that she'd get back to me. It was because I was paying privately and I was paying in full when I came in that I got priority, which I don't feel like is, is right. Um, not only that, I mean, I was grateful for it, but I mean, imagine being, living there and having your son all of a sudden get diagnosed with this condition and not being able to be seen for months. Like that's, that's where my thoughts went. And then on top of that, I went in to go see this pediatrician and she was great. She was nice. She was, she was totally nice and kind. I was giving her the whole backstory um, about how, you know, in it, in 2020, we're going to need MRIs and EEGs and all of that again to see if everything comes back normal and the same and if we can start um, taking him off his meds. And her legitimate response was, oh, then we need to put him on the waiting list now because there's children that are in the hospital, children guys, children that are in the hospital waiting for MRIs and EEGs and the wait list is over a year long. And those are kids that are in the hospital. That alone just made me go, oh my gosh. And I said, oh no, we'll be going back to America for the testing. And she said, 
Oh, well, that's probably a good idea. How long is the wait list there? <laughs> and I said, there isn't a wait list. When he got diagnosed, I took him in for his EEG the next day, and then his MRI was within the same week. Like, there's not a wait list. It's, they, they get you in, they see you, because we're paying for the service. Um, anyways, so that was just something that just baffled me, is that these children that are waiting to get medical attention are being waitlisted. Um, so that was just something too that just makes me super grateful and it makes me, because I mean, you don't really understand what free healthcare is until you actually live it, right? So I lived it <laughs> and it's something that now, having lived free healthcare, I will be very vocal against free healthcare. Um, it's not because I want people to suffer that can't afford it. It's because I don't want people to... Children. I don't want children to be subject to essentially being tortured for a year to get the help that they need. Um, and that's the great thing about America too. Even if you're poor and even if the bills are gonna kill you, you will be seen. Like they, they will still take you in at the hospital. I know there's a whole bunch of other programs um, that can help you pay for the bills, um, things like that. You will, be, you will be seen and taken care of. Versus here, these there, those kids needed help. They needed to be um, getting MRIs and they needed to be getting EEGs. And instead they were sitting in the hospital, still seizing, most likely. And their parents are left wondering if it's permanent or if it's developmental or if there's something worse going on. That's, that's, that's my soapbox for you guys, is <laughs> I will be very vocal against free healthcare for the rest of my life after seeing what I saw and experiencing what I experienced. Um, it's just not, it's not something America should be striving for. Um, not only that, there was another experience, I know you guys are probably thinking, oh, well, that's just you. Um, my daughter went to school and her friend um, in first grade broke her finger at school. Um, and I was friends with her mom and her mom was telling me, oh yeah, we took her to the doctor and you know, she can't get an x-ray until next week to see if it's actually broken. This is a first grader's finger, okay? Um, like this is the times in their lives when like they're growing and developing and things need to be fixed to make sure that they keep growing and developing properly. So she goes, yeah, they, they can't get her in for an x-ray to actually confirm if it's broken or not till next week. So we'll just, we're just waiting for that. And she just was like, this is just normal. Like, that's just normal. And I was like, are you serious? Like, they can't do anything sooner? And she goes, no. Well, then she got in for the week and it was broken and they needed to cast it. And they couldn't cast it for another few days. And they had to re-break the finger because it had reattached, like restarted to re essentially started to fix itself. You know, your body will kick in and try to do that. So they don't, not only did they have to re-break it, they casted it like a few days later. So let me get back to this. These are 12 by 12 papers. I'm cutting them into one inch strips. And then all I'm doing is connecting them like a paper chain. Now this makes quite a big paper chain and I'm probably connecting them by like an inch, probably. This makes quite a big paper chain. As you can see, it like fits on my wrist, but I want them bigger. I like them bigger. So anyways, that's, that's what this is. Um, 
But yeah, so that's kind of my soapbox about where we lived. Like I said, it's a great place to visit. Maybe if you don't have small children, it's a great place to live. But when you're used to the American conveniences um, and um, just different things culturally, it is really difficult to live elsewhere with small kids um, that you have to kind of worry about. So, Australia was great. I loved it. A year was probably perfect, and I'm more than happy and more than excited to be home. There you go. Um, anyways, I'm just going to finish this up now that you guys have seen me cut all the papers. Um, and then I might jump back on later and post either a video or just a still frame of what it looks like on the tree. But I hope you guys enjoyed my little soapbox rant. <laughs> my uh, free healthcare speech, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think I'm just gonna finish this up off camera so you guys aren't sitting here forever and I can show y'all when I'm done. I think that's all I had to say. Yeah, we've moved. We're now back east. This is the paper chain. This is what we got going on. I'm gonna finish it up and then I'll hop back on and show you guys the finished product. Okay, guys. So I have the camera tilted down so you can see what I'm doing on the bottom. I have my paper chain. I have no clue if it's long enough or not. So we might get started, have to stop and add more. But I'm gonna take this and start in the back. Um, I'm doing it from this angle because I still want my, um, Front, what's seen out the window to look good, and what's seen in the room to look good as well. I'm just gonna kind of tuck it into the branches. Should we go make more? No. No.